What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. In this next video, what we gotta do is take these three equations here, solve for x, y, and z. So I'm going to do it algebraically, and there's different methods that you can go about doing this. Actually, what I recommend is you pausing the video now, trying to solve this yourself, and seeing if you get the same solutions at the end that I do. There's multiple ways you can go about this. You could do it with elimination, substitution, you could put in a matrix if you've learned that in your specific course. Personally, what I'm gonna do is substitution. So first thing I usually look for is any variables that are alone, meaning that they have a leading coefficient of one or negative one in front of them. And notice that we have this z here that has a coefficient of one in front of it, and then an x that has a coefficient of one. And so you can isolate for either or. What I'm gonna do is I'll isolate for the x here. So I'm gonna bring this, this, and this, or uh, sorry, the negative two on the four z over. And so what would end up happening is we'll have x equals four plus two y minus four z. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and plug it in for this x and this x in the other two equations. And then we'll have two equations and two unknowns. It'll be all in terms of y and z. So starting with equation one, let's maybe number these to keep track. So we'll have five bracket this, and then we'll have plus five y plus z is equal to nine. So this would end up being 20 plus 10y minus 20z plus 5y plus z is equal to 9. And then from here, you want to simplify the like terms. So 10y plus 5y, that would give us 15y minus 20z plus z would give us minus 19z. And then I'll bring the 20 over. So we'll have 9 minus 20 which would give us minus 11, like that. So there's one equation. And then if we plug this in for the third equation, we'd end up with three bracket, four plus two y minus four z, bracket minus five y plus three z is equal to. 14. And then doing the same thing here as we did with that first equation. So we'd have 12 plus 6y minus 12z minus 5y plus 3z is equal to 14. So just be very careful with your algebra here. 6y minus 5y would give us y. And we'll have minus 12z plus 3z, which would give us um, minus 9z. And then we'll have 14 minus the 12 when we bring this 12 over. So that would end up being two. And so we'd have a second equation right there. So we have that equation and this equation and two unknowns, the y and the z. And then to solve for these two, I'm gonna do substitution again because I'm gonna isolate for this y here, it's by itself. So that's equal to two plus nine z. And then I'm gonna take this, plug it in for this y. So we'd have 15 bracket two plus nine z minus 19z is equal to negative 11. And now notice we have an equation in terms of one variable, in terms of the z that we could solve for. So this would end up being 30 plus this here would end up being what? 135z minus 19z is equal to negative 11. Bring this over. So this would end up being negative 41 this here, 135z minus 19z, that would give us what, um, 116z? And then we could divide both sides by 116, like that, so z would equal negative 41 over 116, like that, and then that doesn't simplify any further. So we have a unique solution for the z value. And then once we have the z value, very easy to get the y value because it's just 2 plus 9 times that z value. And so if we plug this z value there, we'll have y equals 2 plus 9 times negative 41 over 
1 16, like that. So this would end up being what? If we take the 2, that's over 1. So if we change it to have a common denominator, multiply this by 1 16, multiply this by 1 16, 2 times 1 16 would give us 2 32. So 2 over 1 is the same as 2 32 over 1 16 plus what's 9 times negative 41? Well, that would end up being negative 369 over 116. And then this positive and this negative, this is like a negative over here. So we'd end up having 232 minus 369, which would end up equaling, uh, what, negative 137? So negative 137 over 116 ends up being the y value. So we have the z value of negative 41 over 116, then the y value of negative 137 over 116. And then what's left to get is the x value. So what we would do then is we would take that y value, that z value, and plug it in here. Notice we already have the x isolated, so we'd have 4 plus 2 times negative 137 over 116 minus 4 times negative 41 over 116, like that. Now, notice the 2 goes into the 116 uh, 58 times. And then this over here, we can simplify as well. The 4 goes into the 116. Actually, I'm going to leave it as a 2 to keep the common denominator 58. So I'll take 2 out of here, and then I'll take change this to 58, right? 4 over 116 is the same if we divide this by 2 and divide this by 2. That's the same as 2 over 58. And then you could have divided this by 4, like you could have put, could have crossed out the 4 and then had a 29 over here. But then to add these up, the common denominator is going to be 58. So I just decided to not divide these by 4, but just divide it by 2. So this would end up being 2 over 58. And so if we simplify this, notice the 4 over the 1, if we multiply this by 58, multiply this by 58, it would end up being 232 over 58 minus 137 over 58. And then this would end up equaling negative, negative, positive 82 over 58. So notice now we have everything in terms of that same denominator of 58. And so from here, it's just basic algebra, so we'd end up with, um, this would end up being what, 232 minus 137 would give us 95, and then 95 plus 82 Right, these would end up netting to 95. 95 plus 82 would give us 177. So we'd end up with 177 over 58 for the x value, and then that doesn't simplify any further. Right, so that's the x value, that's the y value, that's the z value. So there's a unique solution. And so basically, these lines here intersect at the point 177 over 58 negative 137 over 116, and negative 41 over 116. So that there ends up being the final answer.